Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be playing around with SSA Swifty. Um, so I think it's supposed to be like Swifty for SSH Wifty, um, but I could be completely wrong. So if I am completely wrong, I am so sorry. Um, but it is definitely a cool project because it essentially allows you to be able to do an SSH or Telnet connection from a browser uh, so that you don't have to actually log into a machine um, if you don't have SSH or Telnet installed. Um, when which nowadays most most machines, even Windows, have kind of kind of has uh, that now, but. Um, it's still a lot of fun to be able to open it in a browser and just have an SSH connection there. So we'll get started and show you how you can do that. Awesome. So uh, the first thing that we need to do is set up a virtual machine so that we can actually run uh, the service um, that will actually open up that you can use in the browser. So for that, we have a few things that we can do. So we have an automated process here that will allow us to essentially create a VM from scratch, update it, and set up a few things. So to do so, we want, uh, in this case, our VM to have a DNS. Um, that makes it really easy to be able to um, connect to the box. So we'll put it in a DNS record, and we're going to just increment it by the by one here. Um, so pretty simple, simple SSA Swifty will resolve to 172.16.1.105 when it is created. So let's add that Swifty. And then next we essentially provision all of our virtual machines via Ansible, which is really cool. Um, so essentially I don't have to even do pretty much any of the work. So all we need to do is make it so that it is part of the inventory here with the SSH 50 so that it knows how to resolve it when we do play it. And that's pretty much it from a GitLab perspective. Um, from there, we're going to use our AWX, which is just another GUI interface for um, Ansible to be able to run its playbooks um, so you can set up like schedules or make workflows. Um, it's actually pretty slick. Uh, if you are more interested um, in like how this is all set up in the back end, uh, feel free to check out my automation series video um, playlist and it will give you kind of a bigger rundown. But what we'll do here is we'll be launching this template that we will create the new VM in, in vCenter, patch it, install Docker, create the certs on our local CA uh, server and set up Nginx with the certs. So we essentially have HTTPS um, encryption, which is amazing. So what we'll do, uh, so we have the host name, Swifty, we'll name it that. The IP of it, which is 105. The VM name, which is just how it show up in vCenter. So I like to just name it that just so I know. And the proxy address. So um, this is for being able to reverse tunnel, or not reverse tunnel, uh, to proxy through um, to it so that Nginx knows where to go for where the application is. So we will look up SSA Swifty um, in here and see their configuration. So essentially, it's uh, pretty pretty easy. They have a pre-built, um, but we'll be using their Docker um, command in here. So essentially, it will publish on 8182 um, by default. Obviously, I can change that, um, but I'm going to just use what they currently have. So 8182, and we'll hit next and let this install and create. So this just takes like two or three minutes. Uh, I'm not going to make you sit through this, obviously. Um, I mean, I could talk for two, two to three minutes if you really wanted me to, but um, we will fast forward the video, use our ending skills, and get to the next part. But um, once this is done, we'll show you what uh, needs to get installed and um, set up to get it run. So um, just for the note, we do install Docker and Docker Compose for in this build, so that will be pre-installed. But if you're interested on how that works, um, feel free to hit my automation series uh, playlist, and it will go through the detail on how to essentially go through this playbook that will install Docker and Docker Compose. Um, so it's pretty neat. Um, but other than that, we'll fast forward the video once this is done and get on the configuration and setup for the actual application. All right, now that it has finished setting up, what we can do is now SSH to the server. 
So, swift. Wait, how to. There we go. SSH, um, Swifty. <laughs> and you gotta type in the password right. If you don't type it in right, it doesn't work. All right, there we go. Um, so you can see uh, if I run doc command, docker is installed and everything. Um, so what we want to do, go back to the GitHub, we'll copy this. Um, and we'll essentially run this, um, but we'll put this in a script. Um, start docker.sh and paste this in here. So essentially it'll run in detach mode, publish on 8128, name Swifty, and it'll download the image. So we'll do docker, well, we'll do start, uh, make it executable first, and then start docker.sh. Um, but, um, wait, Ooh. you need to get rid of it. It's doc command. There we go. I'm definitely not tired, you guys. <laughs> so we will, uh, start docker. It'll pull the image. It's a pretty small image, so it, it'll, it'll, uh, pull pretty quickly. So you can see it's running on 8128. Um, and we also have it in our engine x configuration to essentially go and proxy pass through it so what we can do here is now go to https um swifty dot dragon dot local and this is the browser interface for it um so it's pretty simple obviously you hit the plus sign. You can either do a telnet or do an SSH. We'll just do an SSH. Um, and you can select password, private key, or none, depending on how you want to authenticate. So we'll just authenticate with the password. Um, so for example, one of my last videos was uh, docmost. Um, so we'll do docmost.dragon.local will be the host. We'll log in as root. And if you haven't checked out docmost, docmost is a very fun application, very similar to like Confluence for documentation purposes. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So we'll hit okay. And then it'll ask us if do we trust this fingerprint? We do. And then we'll type in our password here um, and log in. So now you can see I am logged into my docmost server here. Um, LS, you can see I, I have my docmost running. Uh, it's just a doc compose file. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. You now can, um, you can increase, you can grab another one, you can tell that. Um, the, the cool thing about this is once you connect once, it actually remembers your known host. So you can actually either clear it, copy link, or you can just click on it and it'll just create a new connection to it. So um, once you've like set it up once, you can just essentially click in the known host um, to, to grab it. So you can export or import um, it from a file, which is really cool. So if you're looking for um, just being able to SSH with a browser um, interface, this is something that you can set up and do pretty simple. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.